So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's called Ready Player One, and it's based on a book about a VR game. Oh, a little part of that sentence was boring. You're starting to lose me. The book part? Bleh. Well, don't worry. It's absolutely packed with pop culture references. Oh, thank God. I was like, what is this, school? Yeah, and actually, whenever I feel like I might be losing people, I throw in a pop culture reference to distract them. Is that actually gonna work? Because it feels like at a certain point, it's just gonna become clear that hey, we're- remember Freddy Krueger? Oh, yeah, I remember Freddy Krueger. That's awesome. Well, he's gonna be in here. Oh, pop culture references are tight. What was I saying? I don't know. Oh well. Anyway, so the movie takes place in the future and everybody plays this big VR game called The Oasis. Okay. And one of the game's creators, Halliday, died and hid three Easter eggs in it. And the first person to find them all gets to run the whole game. Pretty reckless thing to do with your company. Super reckless and the main guy, Wade, wants to find all the Easter eggs before this corporation IOI does. Oh, tell me more about IOI. Oh, well the head of IOI is this guy, Nolan Sorrento and all he cares about is money. Oh, I like this guy. Oh, well, no, actually, he's the bad guy. How so? He wants to run the Oasis so he can fill it up with advertisements and product placements. He's a bad guy because he wants to include product placements? Pretty evil, right? You do realize we're gonna have a bunch of product placements in this very movie, right? Yeah, it's okay when we do it. Oh, okay, good. So if IOI are the bad guys because they want to use the Oasis to make money, does that mean that the Oasis currently doesn't make money? Oh, no, it definitely does. It makes trillions of dollars. So why is it bad for IOI? IOI to want to use the Oasis to make a profit if the Oasis is already making a profit off of people. Hey, you know Batman? Oh yeah, I know Batman. Why? What's up with Batman? We're gonna reference Batman in this movie. Oh, that's amazing. Batman is tight. What was I talking about? No idea. Oh, okay. So how do people actually play this VR game? Inconsistently. What? Yeah, some people play it on a treadmill, some people just sit in chairs, other people run around in the streets blindly. Oh. Also, sometimes you'll get flipped upside down, other times you can do karate kicks, I don't know. Feels like we should have some consistency with how the game actually works. Oh, but I don't wanna. Oh, okay, never mind. So anyway, people have been stuck on this race challenge for like five years trying to find the first key. Okay. And Wade's gonna figure out that there's a secret passage in the race if you just go backwards. You're telling me that in five years no one ever tried to go backwards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't gamers notorious for digging through video game levels and searching everywhere for hidden details and passages? They are. And in five years nobody has tried going backwards. That's what we're going with. So now Wade has his character's name up on this big scoreboard. Oh, why is there a scoreboard? To keep track of the score. What score though? Isn't it just a matter of finding the keys first? Yes. And then Wade becomes famous and buys himself a cool new suit. In the game? No, in the real world. What? Yeah, and this new suit lets him feel everything. Like, he can feel pain now. Why would you want to feel pain? That's a massive disadvantage. Well, the bad guy has one, too. At a certain point, he's gonna get kicked in the balls. His suit lets him virtually get kicked in the balls and feel the pain in real life. It does. So anyway, we're also gonna have Wade fall in love with another Easter egg hunter named Olivia. Oh, why do they fall in love? Because they're the main characters. Gotcha. And we're gonna have this cool scene where Wade and Olivia are dancing and IOI busts in and starts shooting at them and they have to to try to not be killed. So this happens in the real world then? No, this is in the Oasis. So couldn't they just remove their VR masks and not be in danger anymore? Yeah, but they're not going to. Why not? Because it's an action scene. But they don't have to be in danger at all. They can just unplug. Hey, you know The Shining? Yeah, I know The Shining. We're gonna show a bunch of stuff from The Shining in this movie. Wow, I love it. Anyway, so in the real world, Olivia's gonna have Wade brought over to where she lives, and she's gonna be like, Welcome to the Rebellion. Oh, tell me more about the Rebellion. I can't, that's the last time we reference it. Oh. And then Olivia's gonna get captured by IOI and put in a little prison pod thing. Uh-oh. Yeah, so Wade and his friends are like, First things first, we need to go save Olivia, then we need to get the last key before IOI does. Wouldn't it make more sense to find the key first? Yeah, but they don't want want to do that. Oh, so it's because they absolutely need her help in the virtual world? No, in fact, Wade is gonna kill her in the virtual world himself. What? Yeah, but in the real world, they are gonna help her get out of her pod. Oh, is that hard to do? No, it's super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, there's like a lever inside the pod, and she pulls on that, and it opens up. That is convenient. So anyway, eventually Wade finds the last Easter egg and gets to talk to Halliday. Okay. And Halliday's big message is that sometimes you need to disconnect and go out in the real world. If that was really what he wanted, wouldn't it make more sense for him to hide the Easter eggs in the real world? What? His plan basically ensures that people are gonna spend more time in the game. If he wanted people to go in the real world, he should have done something involving that.
Hey, remember the Iron Giant? Of course I remember the Iron Giant. In this movie, too. That is so cool. What were we talking about? I don't know. So anyway, Wade gets to take control of the Oasis, and he's like, new rule, everybody. It's gonna be shut down on Tuesdays and Thursdays. What about people who can only play on Tuesdays and Thursdays? Screw them. Very harsh. So what do you think? Well, I really like that it's full of pop culture references, so I say let's make this thing. Awesome. So is this like a top priority, or? Oh, absolutely. We're gonna get this done ASAP. Amazing. Hey guys, Ryan here. I hope you enjoyed that pitch meeting. A lot of requests for that one. Let me know in the comments section what other movies you'd like to see pitches for. We also have a lot more pitches on the channel, as well as a new show called Theory Battle you could check out. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a like, share it on Facebook and Twitter, all the other things. And be sure to check back soon for a new one. Bye-bye.